Factoring polynomials with four terms or more are always intimidating to a lot of kids. So today I will be giving you some strategies on how to factor this type of polynomials by using grouping. So let's take a look at this first example. We have 8n to the third minus 24n squared plus 3n minus 9. So first step is to group this polynomial into two groups. I will have first two terms as my first group, second term as my second group. Next, we need to find the GCF for each group or the greatest common factor. So the greatest common factor for the first term is 8. 8 can divide 8 and negative 24, so we factor out the 8. And the smallest power for n is square. So we need to factor out that GCF 8n square. And that means inside will be n minus 3. Because when you do distributive property, if you multiply 8n squared by n, that gives you 8n to the third. 8n squared times negative 3, you will also get that negative 24n squared. So again, the first term, uh, the first group, has a GCF of 8n squared. And inside the parentheses, we have n minus 3. For the second group, 3n minus 9, what do you think is the GCF? Yeah, it is 3. So factor out the 3. And inside the parentheses, 3 needs to be multiplied by n to get 3n. And 3 needs to be multiplied by minus 3 to get a negative 9. And one thing that you need to be observing here is the parentheses. If you look at each group, each group has the same parentheses n minus 3. And that's really important because when factoring by grouping, First thing that you need to do is take out that common factor in each group, which is n minus 3. So n minus 3, n minus 3 for both groups, I'm taking it out. And for the second factors, we will write the outside terms 8n squared. I just copied 8n squared and the plus 3 for the second group. So again, n minus 3 is common to both groups. And 8n squared plus 3 are the outside terms of n minus 3. And that's the final answer for, the, for this polynomial. If you'd like to check your answer, you could do the distributive property. And you should come up with that polynomial with four terms. Okay? So it's not too bad. Let's have example 2. So for our second example... We have also a polynomial with four terms. And again, this is our first group, and this is our second group. For the first group, the GCF of 30 and 12 is 6. And we need to include the x squared, the smallest uh, power or the exponent for that variable x. So we have 6x squared. And what do we multiply with 6x squared to get 30x cubed? Yeah, that is 5x. 6x squared times 5x, you get 30x cubed. Plus, we have 6x squared, we only need to multiply that by 2 to get the term 12x squared. Now, if you look at the second group, 5x plus 2, what do you think is the GCF for that? So in that terms, 5x plus 2, the greatest number that you can uh, factor out is simply 1. You don't have a GCF higher than a 1. So we need to write down plus 1 and then just copy 5x plus 2. And again, you have 5x plus 2 here, 5x plus 2. So we are ready to write the final answer. So the final answer would be... 5x plus 2 is common to both groups. And the outside terms are 6x squared plus 1. So we have 6x squared plus 1.
That's the complete factored form for this polynomial. So after the two examples, factoring by grouping is not difficult at all, right? Okay, let's try this third example. First group, second group. So the first group, the GCF is 42M squared. And what's going to be the terms inside the parentheses? M minus 2. Because 42m squared times m, you get 42m to the third. And if you multiply that by negative 2, that's also negative 84m to the second power. Second group. Be careful with the second group. We have negative 18m plus 36. What do you think is the greatest common factor? Yes, it is 18. However, we will not write positive 18 here because if you will have, if you will put plus 18, that means you need to have negative 1m plus 2. And these parentheses are not exactly the same. So your goal is to make these parentheses exactly the same. So instead of writing plus 18 outside, we need to write down minus 18. So I'm going to write down here minus 18. So again, the GCF of negative 18m plus 36 is negative 18 instead of plus 18. That way, inside the parentheses, you will have m minus 2, which is now the same as the first group. So for each group, m minus 2 is common. The outside terms, 42m squared minus 18. Here, we need to do one more step. If you look at the two factors, m minus 2 and the second parentheses, second factor, 42m squared minus 18, we can still factor out a GCF for 42 and 18, which is 6. So we can still factor out the 6 for that. M minus 2, we just keep it that the same. But if you factor out 6 for this group, 6 times 7m square is 42m square. And minus 3 gives you 18. Now we just need to copy the m minus 2. So the final answer is 6 parentheses m minus 2 parentheses 7m squared minus 3. Just take note, we always need to factor the polynomials completely. For this problem, I'd like you to look closely to the terms. Because if you will group this as the first term, 14 and 15, 35 and 6, it's difficult to get GCF that will give you the same parentheses for both terms. So for this type of question, that requires regrouping and rearranging the terms. I will regroup 14xy and negative 35y squared. Because if you group 14 and 35, you can easily get the GCF of 7. And this 2, you can also get the GCF of 3. So first, I will be rewriting these terms. So I will write down 14xy minus 35y squared as my first two terms. So that will be my first group. For my second group, I will copy and negative 15y. So first group, this is our second group. First group, the GCF is 7y. So we factor out 7y. What do you multiply with 7y to get 14xy? Yes, it is 2x. So we put 2x. What do you multiply with 7y to get negative 35y squared? It's negative 5y. So we put that. Again, if you do distributive property, 
This is 14xy, and then you have negative 35y squared. Okay? For the second group, 6x minus 15y, the GCF is 3. Factor up. We need to multiply 3 with 2x to get 6x. Multiply 3 with negative 5y to get a negative 15y. And if you look at the parentheses, again, we came up with 2x minus 5y for each group. So that means we did uh, group them correctly. So the final answer, 2x minus 5y. And the outside terms, 7y plus 3. Again, 2x minus 5y is the common factor for each group. And the outside terms are 7y plus 3. You can also rewrite the answer uh, the other way. Uh, multiplication is commutative. So that means you can have 7y plus 3 multiplied by 2x minus 5y as your complete factors. Let's take a look at example 5. x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12. So for here, there's no need to regroup them for the first group. The GCF is x squared. That means inside the parentheses, you will have x plus 3. Again, if you multiply this, that becomes x cubed. And you have 3x squared. x cubed, and then you have 3x squared. So that is x squared multiplied by x plus 3. For the second group, negative 4x minus 12. The GCF is 4, but we need to write down minus 4 parentheses. Be careful with the sign. This should be x, and then this becomes plus 3. So now we will have x plus 3 is common to both groups. And the second parentheses outside terms are x squared and minus 4. Now, did you notice anything with our factors x plus 3 and x squared minus 4? Can we simplify any of this further? Yes, we can factor out x squared minus 4. It is a difference of perfect squares or a difference of squares. Since it is a difference of squares, that means we can factor it out further. And that will be x plus 2, x minus 2. Because that is a difference of perfect squares, you will have x plus 2 and x minus 2, and don't forget the x plus 3. So the final answer is x plus 3, x plus 2, times x minus 2. So I hope that you learned something for the factorum by grouping, and again, it's not difficult at all.